the boy drop code once again and in this tutorial we'll be looking at a new version of Adonis JS. Adonis JS has released a new version um, in version 5 but we're going to look into it, dive into it and see how we can connect with this new release of Adonis JS. First of all Adonis JS is going to be making use of um, TypeScript well, I already built a small app that we're going to use to walk through the entire um, documentation for now. Then there are still other advanced concepts, but we'll look into that later on. So for now, we're going to be building a simple task um, manager. So what we're going to be able to do is to assign task, um, check if it's complete, or, or check if it's not complete, or delete the task. So here is a simple platform here built with Vue.js, then Adonis.js on the backend. So for now, if I go to create task, as you can see, we have no task yet. But from here, we can add a title. Um, just create a small um, sample. Then once I create that, it connects to the backend database and stores that new task for me. Therefore, I can view that task here. I can delete it if I want to. I can also mark it as done. And it's also going to update the database as well. Then I can also delete that task. And once we delete it, it goes back to this image you can see right here. So for the Vue.js part, we're going to be dealing with routing, how to route your um, different pages then also we're going to be working with forms and we're going to do a, just a little simple validation but without filling anything here as you can see we create this it pops up a little bit of um, validation to let the user know that he hasn't filled any of the fields yet so after popping up it goes out after like three seconds or so so we're going to be treating that and also we're also going to be adding a little bit of transition as you can see as we move through the pages there's a little bit of transition added to that page as it moves in it feeds in and feeds out to the next page also you can see at the top header of the navbar you can also see the loading bar as we as we progress through the pages there's a um, progress bar we are making use of here as we progress through the pages as well we are also going to be integrating that into our application then on the back end we're going to be using Adonis JS 5 which is written in TypeScript but don't be afraid it's very very easy to use I went through the docs yesterday and I came up with this so if I can do it you can do it as well so I'm just going to quickly go to Adonis JS um, while that is loading um, let's let's see and then um, if you're a VS Code user, it doesn't really matter which ID you use for this tutorial. You can use either your VS Code or Sublime Text. For me, I'll be making use of Sublime Text. So here is the documentation for the um, Adonis JS 5. It's not yet fully released because some packages haven't been really integrated into the new version yet. But it's production ready, meaning that you can actually build a real-time application with this and shipped to production so if you're looking for a node.js framework that you can make use of that is also similar to laravel if you're coming from the laravel space into node.js i need a framework that is well organized and uses the same mvc structure as laravel you can step into adonis.js easy peasy so without um, talking too much let's get right into this so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop in my terminal here. I'm just going to clear what you see on the screen. Then I will navigate into uh, my folder where I'm going to create um, the new um, Adonis JS um, framework and this thing, um, the backend. So if I go into my documents, into my node apps. Then here I can um, put out a small Adonis um, application inside of this place. So first of all, I'm going to create a, I'm going to create an empty folder. So 
So the folder is going to be called, let's just call it um, Adonis Stars. So now that we have that folder, I'm just going to cd into Adonis Stars. Then inside here, if I list out everything we have in the folder, it's pretty empty. There's nothing there yet. So let me open my folder so you can see it physically. Go into my documents. We have web dev and node apps. Then as you can see here, we have um, Adonis task. If I enter there, the folder is pretty empty. So here we are going to scaffold uh, Adonis JS backend, and we are also going to scaffold our VJS frontend as well. So in this first video, all we're going to do is just the basic setup. We're just going to set up our Adonis JS app. Then we're also going to set up our VJS app to run. So to do that, let's first start with the Adonis backend. So if you're used to Adonis JS already, you should know there is a CLI for Adonis JS, but the CLI has been scrapped out into a new, a new and um, more modular version of the CLI. So instead of having two CLI in the previous versions, we just have one CLI now. So to create a new Adonis um, project, if you come here, quick start, they will tell you to first of all check your node version. If it's up to version 12.14 and NPM as well. So if you're going to be using NPM, you use this NPM in it, the new app, Adonis TS app. Or if you want to use YAN, you can also use YAN. So for us, we're going to be using YAN to scaffold our Adonis JS project. So to do that, I'm going to paste that here. Then we'll call this, um, let's call this a server. So that will scaffold a default Adonis JS app with. There's also a flag for APIs. Okay, the boilerplate is going to generate, um, it, it's going to prompt us to choose either we want to do API development only or we want to do a full stack web app using Adonis JS alone. Because Adonis JS has two different sides. It has the API only where it's focused on developing APIs for you. Then while the full stack Adonis app works with Adonis on the back end, then also it has a templating engine um, following edge but it's more um, redesigned to, for um, for Adonis JS specifically so but since we are going with the API we're just going to do the run the same command again then you can name it whatever you want to name it I'm naming my server so I'll pause the video here while that is loading then we'll pick up from from when once it's done so right here is prompting us to choose either the API server or if you want to build a web application using Adonis JS. But for our own needs, we're going to go with the API server. Then it asks you for the project name. Use the same project name. Yes, Lint. Yes. So that to scaffold a default Adonis JS API only application for us. So if you have no experience with TypeScript, it's really no big deal. We are going to be, as they say, a valid JavaScript code is also a, a valid, yeah, a valid JavaScript code, a valid TypeScript code is also a JavaScript code, same same way otherwise as well. So even writing pure normal JS in TypeScript, the compiler still compiles it down to normal JavaScript, so no problem. So you can write your normal JavaScript in Adonis JS as well. It doesn't disturb you, it doesn't bug you about that. All the TypeScript does is to help you, um, how will I put this? It helps you write better code, let's put it that way. It helps you write better code. So situations whereby you have um, variables of um, that is supposed to take in a boolean, then you pass in a string, it prompts you immediately before you run that code that um, there's a link that prompts you immediately to tell you that this variable can't take in strings, it can only take in booleans. So 
that's where TypeScript comes in. But if it's just a normal JavaScript, there won't be a prompt for that. It's after you run your code, then you now find out that there's an issue or there's a bug somewhere. Then you have to start going back to find it. And that, that will consume time sometimes. So with TypeScript, you're able to avoid all that. So that's the benefit of using TypeScript over the pure JavaScript. So wait for this to finish up, then I'll get back to you guys. So we have a uh, backend app successfully scaffold into the same folder we created. So if I open up the folder here, we are able to see the server and inside the server we have our entire backend app here as you can see. So next thing we're going to do now is to prepare a Vue.js application which we're going to make use of. So for the Vue.js is pretty easy. We may open the Vue.js documentation. So right here, as you can see, we're in the Vue.js documentation, and from here we can click on the Get Started. It will prompt. It will show you how to get started with Vue.js. So first of all, the installation. So it first of all shows you the CDN version, so you know that you can write Vue.js without actually. And going through the terminal and installing um, the CLI as well but it's mostly advised to pick up the CLI and use that so it will tell you to go to this official CLI documentation that's probably where you find them uh, how to create a project using futures to create a project all we need to do is to use view creates and the name of the project if you don't have view CLI you have to install it through here there is a installation guideline here that shows you how you can use yarn to install that or npm to install it but for creating a project all we need to do is use view creates then the name of the project so I'm going to open up the terminal to do that now So we'll see if you create then um, let's see front end. So that will scaffold a default Vue.js application. So for this you can use the default setup. So for now, I have a bunch of um, setup already saved here for most of the apps I use, but I'm going to manually select features so we can go through it together. So normally going to have Babel, you can add TypeScript if you want, but for now we'll stay out of that. Then PWA, you need a router, use space to select which one you want to use. Then we need VX, we're going to be managing, doing a little bit of state management. And I'll show you guys how to manage your states and how to do it professionally as well too. Then CSA preprocessor. Then we don't need unit testing or enter end testing. So linter, CSS, VX, routing, and the rest. Okay, this, this is fine. Then use enter to go to the next step. So it asks you if you want to use a stream mode for router. Yes. Then SAS or SCSS we want SAS. Then ESLint, yeah, normal. This is ESLint prettier. Let's just use ESLint. Lint on save, lint on fix, lint on save. So let's just use a uh, package.json for our simplicity. No, we're not saving that. Alright, so we are done. So the app has fully scaffolded the default features um, package. So the next thing we're going to do now is to go into our folder just to make sure that everything is properly where they're supposed to be. Alright, 
so back in my documents no dabs then I do this task so now we have the front end and we have the server so our back end is here then uh Vue.js is here so that's where we're going to run it so we're going to open this entire thing in sublime text so that we can switch between uh, projects from there so i'm just going to let me go back and do that let's select sublime text So now we have the project right here so we're just going to expand it so now here we have the server and we have the front end so for now we're going to split our screen so that we can occupy both the browser and the project so we're going to be also using postman to test our apis before actually using it on the front end so for that i already have postman installed which is right here then we're going to use that to actually test our app just want to quickly see this Alright, so through here we can click here to create a new request, then from here we'll be doing our testing. So for now let's take a look at the other news shares. We, since we're not going to actually need the browser so we can minimize that and use the old screen for for our code editor. So we're going to the server. You can see a bunch of folders here. So it's very simple. I'm just going to try to explain the folder structure before we go into the actual code. So the first thing, let's let's start from the bottom. We have some setup um, files here. Then we have an env file, which is used to set up our constants and um, important um, keys as well. Here we have the app key. Then we have the environment. Then we have the host. Then we have our ports. So that's all we have there for now. We're going to set up some other things that are going to contain that are going to be contained in here as well. So then we move on to the start. The start folder contains the kernel, then the routes. So inside the route, as you can see, there's just one simple route there, which is routes.it gets um, request, then it goes to the root route, then it returns a callback function. So the callback function is just going to return just an hello world um, text for you so that's all we have in the start folder here we have providers where we store most of our setup but you don't need to concern yourself with this then also here we have node modules contracts config we we're going to set up our calls the app and some other things like that then we have commands basically the commands is for um queues and like if you want to trigger some custom commands on the background of the application like in, in like you want to send mails to people and you need a command that is going to run every 10 minutes 20 minutes you can do that in here then we have an app where we're going to be mainly doing our work in here contains the controllers the uh, models and the rest like that then you can find database and that extra folder called database but since we haven't connected our database it's not going to show up yet so to connect our database the first thing we need to do is to set up sql because we're going to be making use of sql for that so there are a lot of things we need to do but it's not that stressful to set up so first of all let's go to our browser in the Adonis documentation when you click on databases so that loads up they tell you how to set up your database you go into setup then they give you a different bunch of options we have mysql sqlite and the rest so you can choose whichever one you're comfortable with then you need to install 
Lucid, which is going to help us um, set up our database and some other stuff we may need in the future. So for us, we're using Yam, so we just use Yam Add to set up Lucid. So now we paste that inside our server. So let me see into the server first. We clear this and paste that command. So that's going to install get lucid in there for us. Um, so lucid is just basically going to it comes with some bunch of commands which we are going to need for probably database settings and some other things like that. And then after that is done installing, we're going to come here and configure. Uh, after running this command, we'll, we'll head over to the next step. So Lucid is actually going to help us set up our EMV file as well. Then it's also going to create a database.cs configuration. Then um, some other files as well. So now that Lucid is done, we need to trigger Lucid. And to do that, we we'll run this command. To do that. So if I paste the command in here and run it, that will now prompt us to select a database we would like to use. So for our case, we're going to be using MySQL MariaDB. We use spacebar to select then enter to um, complete. So that will install some packages. It's going to install MySQL and some other required packages for that to work. So it's telling us to make sure we compile code before before running so let's see node is then um, serve watch i think this is going to help us compile our code just telling me some bunch of um, things here Okay, this has to do with my system, so you shouldn't have this um, huge error here. So I'm just going to clear the screen so that we can see clearly. So now, after doing that, let's run the command again to invoke Lucid. So let's SQL. Alright. So I think that is done. Let's head back into our code and check if we have everything all set up. Head back to our .env. As you can see, we have SQL driver here. Then we have our host, then the um, DB user, which is going to be our my roots. It can be any user you have set up on MySQL for you. And if you have a password, you put that here. So our database is going to be Adonis task. We we'll save that. Then first of all, I need to start up my database server. So to do that, just put my password. So it's already running. So I'll just go to the browser and create the database. So this should open up the typical page from admin. I think everybody should be using PHMA admin and if you're using Workbench, whatever you're using, just head over there and create a new database. So now create a new database and call it Adonis Task, same name we called it in the EMV file. So after creating that, we should be able to run migrations into this database table. So now we head back into our code. Now that we've set up everything here, we, we are done with setting up SQL for our application. It's that simple. So now that we're done with that, the next step we need to go into is to create our um, database migrations, which we're going to make use of. And to do that, we can go through the um, documentations for that, but I'm just going to do that straight up. So if we do node is dash dash help. That will give you all the available commands that you can use to generate any file you want to degenerate. So, but for us, we want to make a migration. So that should be 
make migration here. So in order for us to do that, we need to generate migrations for our task. That to set up our database for the task. Then um, I think that's the only migration we need to make. We're not we not handling users, so we don't need anything for users. So what we need to do is just to say um, node is uh, make migration. Then call this task so that to create a migration file with the basic uh, migration inside so now as you can see we have a database folder here now so we head inside the database we have migrations folder then inside there we have our task so don't let this scare you it's just the basic setup for uh, migrations so you have the name of the table which is called task then we have the fields the column that are going to be contained in that table so now we have um, the id which is auto incremented then we have timestamp for created that and updated that so that is automatically done so in between here we're going to set up um, table dot we're going to be using a string and the value for that string is going to be title that will be our, the title of the task we are about to create so that will be um, task then not nullable we don't want it to be empty when the user is trying to create a task the next thing to do is table dot string again but this is going to actually be actually be the task so then for this i'm thinking of calling it something else but let's just call it the task So now we have that also set to not nullable. So we want the user to provide the title and also provide the task as well. So now that we've done the migration, that's all we need to do here for the migration. Then the next file we need to generate is our model. So our model is going to help us connect to the actual database. So the model is actually going to be linked to this migration file. So we use that model to query the database. So to create a model, we just need to do node is then make model then call that task. So now we have app model slash um, task. So now if we go into our app, we have our models already. Then we have a task there. So the task um, model. This area is going to help us connect to the database as I've said before. But now we need to state the um, fields that we want a user to impute data into. Some fields might be restricted and some fields can be set here so that the user can actually impute data into our database. So for those fields to be set, we need to set the column. And what column are we setting to specify it under? So that's public um, title, which we already set in our migration. Then what's the um, type of the title? It's going to be a string. So this is where TypeScript comes in. Now we are setting the default data type of the title to be a string. If a user enters something other than a string, it's not going to go through. The, it's going to immediately prompt us while we are testing that okay this is not a string it's not going to allow it to go through to the database so next thing to do is to set column again and what column are we setting this time we are setting the the task column which is also going to be a string so now after doing that as you can see down here we have other columns here which is for the date time which is created and updated as as you can see and the type is date time then we have our id here which is primary which is a primary key then it's number for the type so now that is all set up so now we can impute data of title and task as well into our database by setting it here so now we're done with migrations we're done with database 
now we we'll go into the controller and the routes to actually set up our functionality but before we do that let's quickly run our migrations then test our api so to run the migration all we need to do is node is migration run so i'm having a bunch of error here access denied for okay So before we run our migrations, we need to. So here we're going to run and compile our code first before we now run our migrations. So we'll do that with node is save watch. So now that we have our code running on server 000 port um, 3333, so now we can go ahead and test our API through that endpoint. But for now, we need to run our migrations, so we do that with node is then migration. So that's uh, that is done. So our migrations are set. So we can go back to our browser and check that. All we need to do is refresh this table, then you have your migrations there for you. Then inside there, you check out the structure, you have your title, the task, the created that and updated that all done through your code. So that's really really powerful to me. So at least there's a little bit of help so you can just focus on building your applications. You don't need to go about doing too many setup like you do when writing express. So now that that is taken care of, all we need to do is go back to our code. Then I've been able to set up our migration, set up our server. So now we can go ahead and hit the route. So which is, uh, let me just copy that from the terminal. So we'll copy this endpoint and come to my postman and paste that link so we send that request then we get hello world meaning that our server is running so i want to thank you guys for going with me through and um, through the adonis share so far in the next video we're going to be working on creating tasks working our routes then moving and um, for that to complete in our API endpoints. So the next video we're going to deal with all our endpoints, then deal with, deal with all our routes. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel, hit the subscribe button now if you like what you see. And don't forget to share this video, give it a like and comment down below whatever you don't understand or what if you topics you want addressed on this channel. Let me know down below in the comments. And thank you and see you next time.